Hey y'all, it's Christina with TV Stuff Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the Power Smokeless Grill. So I already took it out of the bag and took everything out of the wrappers and everything. It was very easy to set up. You just got a couple pieces, the heating coils, all your controls and the fan and the heating temperatures are over here on the side. You do have just this tin little drip plate. And then all the way in the bottom, there is, it's very thin, it's just a little plastic pan. Um, it does say that we're going to put water in there. Not sure if that helps with the ventilation or what, but then you also have the fan down here to vent the smoke while we're cooking. Again, super easy to put it all together, so I do see that it's gonna be fairly easy to clean. It does also come with the griddle, perfect for pancakes, eggs, bacon, all that deliciousness. And then of course you do get the grill plate as well. It is non-stick, so it's supposed to be easy not only to cook on, but also to clean, so we're definitely gonna test that out. It does say that you can cook about six burgers or about four chicken breasts on here, so we are going to test that out as well. It does come with a lid. I did have to put the handle on two seconds, no big deal. And it also came with the owner's manual and a couple cookbooks as well. So right off the bat, I do notice a couple things that I'm a little iffy about. So it did come with a lid, which is great. So it's not splattering all that grease and everything all over your house or your kitchen, but it does have this rubber liner and doesn't really seem to do much. It's not like it seals or fits in there any way, shape, or form. It's kind of just there. Um, so I'm not sure about that. I guess we'll see how it holds up over time. And then another thing I'm not really sure about is the size of this little plate on the very bottom inside. Again, it says that we're gonna put water in here. I also noticed that obviously the grease is gonna be dripping down there too. So I'm just not quite sure how much that is going to hold. And again, I get that there is a vent and a fan in here, but without anywhere for it to go, not really sure how this is gonna work, but definitely excited to try it out. It says that it's great for apartments, mobile homes, um, trailers, like RVs and stuff, going camping. And I definitely see how it would be convenient. If I didn't have the luxury of a backyard and a grill, this is definitely something that I would want. Even in an apartment, I know that they have the grills downstairs normally for you to use, but who wants to take all their food down there, cook it where everybody else has been cooking, who knows what. And then you just have to take it right back upstairs. Most of the time your food's gonna be cold. And even if it's not by the time you get upstairs, then you have to make all your sides so it's gonna get cold anyways. So this definitely seems like it would come in handy in an apartment or camping and stuff like that. So first we are going to grill a burger and see how it comes out. Okay, so I put the grill all back together. I did go ahead and I filled that bottom plastic pan with two cups of water, put it all back together. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. I did turn it up to 450. That is the hottest temperature that you can set the grill to. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it all the way up and if I need to adjust accordingly as I'm cooking, I can absolutely do so. Now the commercial says that you can cook frozen meats on there as well, so I do have two pre-made frozen burger patties from Simple Truth that we're gonna grill up as well. So I have the grill set. It does say that it takes about four to seven minutes for it to heat up. So we're just gonna give it about five minutes and I'll be right back. So first we are going to be grilling up two frozen pre-made Simple Truth burger patties. The commercial does say that you can do the meats from frozen as well. So we're going to test that out got them all seasoned up. I'm just going to wait a few more minutes while the grill starts to heat up. So while I was waiting for the grill to warm up, I was kind of curious if it was going to beep or if something was going to happen to let me know it was at temperature, but the fan actually kicked on all on its own. So I'm just going to assume that it's ready for cooking. So we have our two frozen Simple Truth burger patties. I'm just gonna go ahead and put those on the grill. My hands are clean, don't worry. And that's my food anyway. Okay, so it does say that you should fit about six burger patties on here. As you can see with just these two, maybe I would have fit four on here, but I do not see it fitting six. It's only me and my little girl, so I don't really care. It 
it's totally fine for me, but in case you needed it to do six burger patties, know that depending on the size of the burgers, it may or may not fit all six. So I'm just going to let these cook for a few minutes. You can hear it sizzling. In about five minutes, I'm going to go ahead and flip these over. Ooh, nice grill marks. I was curious if that was actually going to happen. Probably keep them on the side just a little bit longer than five minutes. First time using the grill, so just kind of playing with the temperature and the timing on how long things need to be cooked. I am impressed with those grill marks though. You don't get anything like that on a George Foreman. Not unless you burn it. So I just flipped the burgers about a minute ago now, and they're definitely starting to smoke. You can hear them sizzling. I'm going to cook them for a couple more minutes on this side before flipping them again. Again, just kind of playing with the temperature and how long to cook these hamburgers. been about six minutes since we flipped them last. I'm just going to go ahead and flip them one more time. See what that other side is looking like. Maybe a little too long. Maybe it's time to adjust the heat. Turn it down to 350. I'll just keep them on for a couple more minutes. And then we should be good. Figured I would go ahead and test out the lid here in these next couple minutes. A little late now. I'm sure there's probably already hamburger grease all over my kitchen, but figured why not go ahead and try out the lid. So our burgers are all done. Nice grill marks. Nice and juicy. I have turned the grill off. The fan is still running. Once it's all cool, I'll go ahead and I will disassemble and throw the necessary parts into the dishwasher. Everything does stay dishwasher friendly, but we know that's not always the case, so we're definitely going to test that out as well. So the grill is all cooled off. I'm going to go ahead and put the pieces that can go in the dishwasher into the dishwasher. Now, normally I don't put my knives or my pots and pans typically in the dishwasher, at least depending on what kind they are. But for this, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put everything that we can in there just to see how the dishwasher cleans it. I was a little worried that this was still going to somehow get dirty and get grease on it, but surprisingly, it is still very clean. So I'm definitely happy to see that. Not very much grease from those burgers. Not even rinsing anything. I'm throwing it all in there. And then you can tell that there is just a little grease down here with the water. Just going to dump that out and then throw that there in the dishwasher as well. turn the dishwasher on and we'll see how everything turns out. Now for the rest of this, honestly, you can hardly see any grease on here, but I'm going to go ahead and just use a wet paper towel, wipe it all down. I do like that there's not a lot of little grooves and things like that on here, so it is fairly easy to just wipe off and clean. The inside still looks nice and dry and clean. Just going to give that a once over as well. Are a little greasy. And there you go. So I've taken everything out of the dishwasher and it actually came really clean. Nothing left on here from when we grilled those burgers. Definitely a little surprised if I'm being honest. The lid, same thing. All the grease came off, looks great. There are some water spots, but that's just my dish. That is just my dishwasher. So now I want to test out the grill plate. So we're just going to fry up a grilled cheese right here and see how it turns out. I already have it warming up, so we're just going to give it a couple more minutes and then we'll get started. 
Okay, so the grill has been heating up for a couple minutes now. Hopefully it's warm enough. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I've already got the bread buttered. Give that a couple minutes until we flip it. Not sticking at all, that's awesome. So it could be that I did not give it long enough for it to heat up. That is very well the case, but nonetheless, it'll be fine. I did just turn the heat up a little bit more just to kind of speed things up. So we'll give it a couple minutes and then we'll check in. All right, so it's been a couple minutes. We're just gonna go ahead and flip this grilled cheese. Oh, looks perfect. Give it a couple more minutes on this side. Again, even though the bread is buttered sometimes in the pan, it will stick until it gets a little toasted, but it's not sticking at all on here because of this nonstick surface on this griddle pan, so that's awesome. So I will be honest, I have not read, read the owner's manual yet, but over here on the temperature controls, I did notice that it flashes at each temperature until it reaches your desired temperature. So you'll always know where it's at and when it is ready for cooking, when it's reached your desired temperature, it will stop flashing, and that's when it's ready to cook. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off. Looks great. We did not need the fan this time. Turn that off. And your perfect grilled cheese on the Power Smokeless Grill. Okay, our grill is already all warmed up so we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna put a couple slices of bacon on there now I will be honest these are pre-cooked slices of bacon and typically I do make my bacon in the oven to avoid any mess in the kitchen but we'll go ahead and plop those on there and turn it up just a bit and I do have one egg here go ahead and just crack that right onto that griddle plate let's go ahead well, let's put this lid back on here. I know it doesn't seem to do anything except for keep the grease from splattering, but let's give it a shot. You go ahead. Ooh, that was really easy. Put the egg. And flip the bacon. Again, it was pre-cooked bacon. I still need to warm it up and get it crispy. Looks kind of like a pancake. I did not put anything down as far as butter or oil for the egg not to stick, but it came right off of this nonstick surface. I do like my eggs over medium, so with the yolk still runny, but no nasty white parts. <laughs> just sticking a little bit that time. I'm just going to assume that's where the yolk was. Go ahead and pull that off. Give the bacon just another second or two. And now this is one thing, if you were doing bacon that was not pre-cooked, you could definitely use the fan to ventilate it a little bit more, and that grease trap down below will definitely come in handy. I did see that it should hold enough grease for about a pound of bacon. Um, I am only doing two pieces. I have no need to cook a whole pound. But I definitely can see that there's plenty of room here to fill this surface with bacon and definitely looks like it would hold that much grease down below. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pull these off, turn off the heat, keep that fan on for a moment, and there you go, egg over medium, and some bacon. Okay, so we've now cooked hamburgers, a grilled cheese, bacon, and an egg on our Power Smokeless Grill. So now I'm going to try some chicken breast. I already have the grill all preheated, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put the chicken breast on there. I do have two, only two, well, I guess it's one and a half. This guy's so super tiny. But we'll put them on there anyway. Just gonna season them lightly. Let those cook up for about seven minutes and then we'll go ahead and flip them. So I did go ahead and flip this little one. He's so tiny that he already needed to be flipped. Nice marks for it being on an indoor power smokeless grill. So again, we're just going to give it a little bit longer. And pull him off. 
slide this guy over here into the middle. And we'll just let him cook for a few more minutes. So another thing that the commercial claims is that you can put a piece of cheese directly on this grill top, burn it on there, and it's supposed to come off super easily. So I would never do this normally, but I have a piece of just regular craft Singles. Just gonna put it right there on the grill. We'll let that melt and burn on that grill plate. And because of the nonstick surface, we should be able to just scrape it right off. All right, our chicken is done and our cheese is melted onto our grill. So I went ahead, I turned the power off. I'm gonna just go ahead, take that chicken breast off. Nice grill marks. And then we'll give that cheese just a little bit of time to cool off a little bit before we go ahead and peel that off. Oh wow, it really is just peeling right off. Okay, I will say that I am impressed. It's only oozing still because not all of it was dried. But yeah, that came off pretty easily. Just some fresh stuff that it squeezed off from that top and yeah, it comes right off. So that's fantastic. I will say that is impressive. Okay, so we've tried out our Power Smokeless Grill now. We've cooked a variety of things on it. We even burnt a piece of cheese onto the grill plates and that nonstick surface is amazing. That's probably my favorite part. Regardless of what I cooked on it or even in the dishwasher, it came out looking great. Nothing stuck to it, nothing got caked on, burnt on, anything like that. Everything pretty much wiped off easily. Really just had to throw it in the dishwasher to really just sanitize it. So that was nice. Um, it's very easy to use. The controls are pretty basic. You have the power button, your different heating controls, and then the button for the fan. Um, I did notice with the heating, since I have not read the manual yet, um, it will actually blink until it reaches your desired temperature. So as you work your way up from 220, all the way up to 450 and once it stops blinking that's when it reaches your desired temperature. Um, everything came apart really nicely. Um, I can say that the vent was not my favorite. Um, it does have that little fan down there in the bottom and maybe the water is supposed to assist with some of that ventilation as well. Um, but after grilling those burgers here in my house there was a little bit of a haze. Um, I did notice here throughout the kitchen, dining and living room. Um, and just the overall smell was not my favorite. So that was definitely a negative for me. Um, I do see that it would come in handy if you lived in an apartment or were camping or in an RV or something like that. Um, it's definitely convenient. The nonstick surfaces were awesome, whether it was on the grill plate or on the griddle. So finally, I would give the Power Smokeless Grill three stars. It's definitely convenient, easy to clean, but there were some drawbacks. And the taste of the meat, obviously you can still tell it was just cooked on an electric grill by the taste of it. Um, and I was not a fan of the fact that my house was still a little smoky and the smell in here was not that great. Um, so three stars for the Power Smokeless Grill. They do have deals online where you can just do a few monthly payments if you can't pay for it all up front. So definitely check that out. And there are always upgrades as well. It did come with two cookbooks along with the owner's manual, so I'll definitely be checking those out for future meals.